Alright, alright, you tubes. Alright, I got called out to check out this 40 ton chiller. It's a glycol chiller. Got three heat exchangers, three liquid line solenoid valves, one for each heat exchanger, one for each condensing unit. Big glycol tank, a circ pump for the tank through the heat exchangers, and then a process pump to send it out to various locations for cooling. Um, it's been off for a year. These two fired right off. This one is not firing. I uh, just checked the uh, liquid line solenoid valve for voltage. So I, I was pretty sure I heard it click and snap. And I got good voltage here at 250 volts. And I'm gonna see if this unit's out of gas. Uh, it's, it's a bummer, it's R22, so. Oh mama. Good news, it's got pressure, woo. That's half the battle right there. All right, so that's interesting. I got in here and uh, that first compressor's turned off in the control panel. Now, I don't know if it's because they don't need the, maybe they don't need that many BTUs because the place is all chopped up now, but I should crank it on and see if it works. Um, I might do that. All right, so I got the unit on. Yeah, good voltage at the bottom of the contactor. It's a 480 volt unit. So I'm gonna have to go uh, take a dive down here and see see what's happening with my compressor here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. All right. So I got a couple things going on. I think this compressor's failed. That's why this was off. I got the disconnect off now. I'm gonna have to ohm out that compressor. The chiller pump, somebody's hot wired it. Um, it's just in full run mode and I don't think it I don't think it runs. I think it's locked up. The uh the whole volute's hot. So if we were pushing glycol through there, it'd be cooled down, and you can see the plates are starting to ice up and the compressors were flooding back. So my chill. This is the circulation pump through the heat exchangers back to the tank. And I think this pump is not pumping. So I'm going to see if I can get that pumping. I think they can get by with just two condensing units because I'll show you guys inside. They cut the place way down. They're not using it for what it was originally designed for, which was wine cooling. So I'm not worried about this compressor being dead, but I do need to get this pump, uh, see if this pump will work. And then, of course, these are all... Rusted out and done. Both ball valves for isolation, which that sucks if you gotta change that pump out. Okay, I got the pump working. It was cavitating, the volute was hot. I was only pulling like two amps. This pump at 480 volts rated for 4.25 amps right here. When it's cavitating, it was only pulling half the amps because it wasn't pushing water. Uh, and it was, it was just cacked up right up here. I went ahead and exercised this valve with my wrench on the nut and then it took off. So it just had a bunch of cack in it. So this is working now. Um, it's pumping now. It's still not working correctly. Uh, the toggle switch is still not turning it on and off because that flow switch right there, that McDonald Miller flow switch, when there's no water flowing like it wasn't, these units should not have kicked on. And that's your safety right there. This needs to make to bring your units on saying that this pump is working. And that's our circ pump for these three heat exchangers. So I need to dig into that. Oh yeah, here we go. Kind of a little schematic. All right, so I got my pump sorted out pumps on now I got a load of my heat exchangers I got these two units running I got to get into the condenser fans on the bottom units there we go and I need to see if this condenser fan has failed I've seen both of those run and now we're cycled down to one
and I haven't got into the process pump yet. Process pump has a gauge we can check when I turn that on. Right now I'm trying to get the glycol solution chilled out. And we're just right here. That's what we're doing. All right, we'll see if this, uh, if this compressor has open windings. Get the power shut off. I got the wire connectors off the terminals and we'll check them here. Right there, open line. Across those two, uh, open winding. I had a feeling. All right. I had to. I had to thaw out the heat exchangers. Let the pump circulate because it wasn't cooling. Now I got everything reset and started with the two units. My temperature's starting to come down now. I was at 82 degrees. Oh. So now I'm no longer flooding back like we were. I got mega heat coming off the condensers. All the fans are running. And I'm gonna let it run like this for a bit here. It, this thing has just been sitting for too long. All right, I'll step away where we can talk. All right, so here's where I'm at on this thing. I got asked to come out to, to do a startup on it and check it out. Um, bottom, the, the main circ pump for the tank, that's our glycol tank. Uh, the, there's a check valve right off the discharge. I'm pretty sure that was cacked up. And just by screwing around and wrapping on it and stuff, we got it discharged. And what it was ever stuck in there broke free. We were able to exercise the ball valves, inlet and outlet. The pump needs to be replaced. The bearings sound terrible on it. So the owner got a snapshot of the part number off the pump and he's gonna see if he can find the pump with the volute. It'd be easier to change it out that way. Um, the compressor on number one is open winding. It's failed. I disconnected the wires from the contactor and tagged it out. So it's secure and safe. I've now got these two units running. I'm still debating if it's low on charge or not. I might be able to suck some gas out of this, this unit. If it's not a burnout, I'll have to test it. And I might be able to top off the charge on these two. And I'm gonna grab the soap bubbles now. There's a flare fitting on the liquid line dryer up there I didn't like. And we'll get some soap bubbles and see if that one's leaking. And we're finally, it's finally, the temperature is dropping on that thing. I had it. I think I had iced up the damn heat exchangers from that pump being cacked up. Oh, and the control started to cooperate too now. Yeah, 68 degrees. We're at 68 degrees. We were at 82. So now we're dropping. I got a ton of heat coming off the fans. My set point, set point is 32. But take a look at this. This was all oily in this flare. So I'm gonna get some soap bubbles on it. Both side glasses are flashing. That's not good. Good, and we'll let her we'll let her sit there with some soap and see how she does. So you see the compressors are no longer flooding back. Look at there, we've got a clear sight glass now. She just needed to run and adjust. This one cleared up also. Clearing up and flashing. It's they're doing their job here in the valve. Cross pattern on the valve looks better now that we got a load coming around so I don't think we're low on charge it just needed to, to run for a bit and settle settle in all right so you can see the glycol tank I got a good flow going now which I didn't have before my 1993 fluke 16 59 degrees let's see what our sensors reading there's our sensor bowl Sixty-one, close enough for government work. Not bad. Oh, 
Uh, it's such a good feeling. They're not low on charge. Let me tell you. All right, let me take you on a field trip. Uh, and I'll show you where all this goes, how big it used to be when they were using all 40 tons. Okay, these are glycol lines that came out and they went in and dropped for, there used to be wine tanks way back here. Now there's beer tanks. And you can see they came in, went down there. That was a drop. It also came in here. This was a big giant walk-in box type deal. And they came in, they also came in, the glycol. You can see the lines. They came in and hit these two crack coils. But also see the drops right here? There used to be big giant wine tanks in here. And they would come down off all these drops and hit the big wine tanks that were in here. And then it carried on through here. And this guy's this guy is gonna end up using it right now. And where did they go? Oh yeah, they come in here and they go around both sides. And we're hitting the tanks. Yo, what's happening? Where's all your tanks? Here we go. Set point. Tank we're pumping down. Sounds like it's pumping down. There we go. That one's first, this one's second. All right, we're at set point. We're circulating. This thing's gonna work for them. It's gonna actually make it a little rough go. We got a new uh, new circ pump motor coming, new pump seal, new volute gasket. And that motor is the bearings are rocked in that thing. Listen to it. Oh, she's hot too. The amp draw is good, but she's hot. So it's time for a new motor there. That compressor's dead, we're gonna leave it dead. And we'll run it as is. Calls like that are fun. Doing a startup on a chiller that hasn't ran in a couple years and we ordered the pump, the pump seal. You couldn't find a volute gasket. We'll just have to see how that works out. And I should have all that together. Oh, pretty soon. I'll probably make a video just on the pump motor change out separate. And I'll be able to show you guys uh, getting the uh, the impeller off. I usually like to heat those up, and then they'll come off. But that was a little startup on the 40-ton glycol chiller. That's now that's now 29-ton glycol chiller. I gotta go over here to the liquor store. They got a uh, a leak on the drink lineup, condensate leak. Uh, let's go take a look at that.